So we're here, I guess, to do some interviewing or some conversations with folks who are looking to fill some uh, open positions. And I guess Larry is first on the in the queue, but I'm not seeing him. I'm not seeing Larry's name, but it's Larry, if you are using a different Zoom login and you are here, uh, raise your hand and, oh, nope, there we go. coming through now. He's there, but he's faceless and, and muted. Well, while we're waiting a minute, I'll just uh, say I've been having network issues all afternoon. So if I pop in and out, it's not me doing it deliberately. We'll just think you're in a car driving around in South Southern California. I always pretend like that. <laughs> Hi, Larry. Hi, good evening. I didn't realize that I was on my screen just sort of went blank and then it popped back up again. So I guess that was the transition point. Well, you're, you're, you're on now and, and welcome. It's always good to see your face. Thank you. Good to see you too. So you're here for Measure B, right? Yes. Right. And I know you, I know you kind of got, got things in right, right here at the edge, but glad to, to have you in, in the hopper. So um, uh, I don't know if you want to say something right off the bat about your interest in, in um, what you think you contribute to this, um, and then we'll ask uh, members of the council for uh, an opportunity for questions. Well, um, you know, my, my interest in this is, um, you know, I always feel like most local governments could use people who have an understanding of, you know, their local finances and to the extent that you know, I can still contribute and assist, uh, you know, the Larkspur Council staff and its residents with what I know about, you know, Measure B and Measure C and the programs associated with rehabilitating our streets, you know, I'm happy to help. Good. Well, we're glad to have your contribution. So why don't we go go around? Does anybody want to want to get started with asking anything they want to ask about um, this with Larry? I'll start, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we got we got Vice Mayor Dan Hilmer up first, and I think I saw Gabe put his hand up. So go ahead, Dan. Hi, Larry. Hi. Uh, uh, given your uh, experience thus far with the measures and implementation, uh, would you mind giving me and the council members a, a, a quick uh, overview of your takeaways from the process and project so far? Well, um, of course, my comments will come with a slightly, you know, slight bias here since I was a part of that process when it started. You know, I think one of the things that Larkspur did to the credit of, you know, our city manager, the uh, public works director, as well as the council was to put together an actual work plan that had a rational basis for why streets were being done in a certain order and the time frame in which it was done. So that's frequently lacking with a lot of other agencies that have large capital projects. And, you know, this provides not only a layer of transparency, it's also a defensible position. And people know exactly when, in this case, their streets will be uh, either repaved or rehabilitated. Thanks. Okay. Um, uh, Gabe, I think you had your hand up. So go ahead. Yep. Thanks. Sorry about the background noise. I've got Finn here, but hey, Larry. Um, just you know, in what you've observed in the last you know year and a half or so since you've been on the council, um, do you see any red flags or you know anything that you would want to prioritize? You know, any concerns you know around the whole paving program or measure B? I don't really see any thing that needs to be reprioritized. Um, I, I thought the, the initial program was pretty sound and there was again a rational basis um, that was created on the criteria that was set and then everything just fell into boxes. Probably the thing that has the, um, if there's any concern and it's always tied to the economy because of sales tax, it's a sales tax revenue driven uh, program is, you know, 
will we have enough money in future years to maintain the streets at the level that keeps it from deteriorating so far that uh, it costs more to fix it later. Great, thanks, Larry. Larry, do you, do you think that the oversight committee has, has been effective in doing its mission and providing oversight to the implementation of this program? And do you see as we kind of move away from the, the capital part of it into the maintenance part that the oversight committee may have a, a changed role in, in any respect? I think what's going to change is that people on the committee need to have a better understanding of, um, you know, how, how to read and interpret the financials and they'll get that, you know, assistance from, uh, you know, the finance manager and the city manager is appropriate, but, you know, it's, it's pretty easy right now to stick the individual expenditures into the, um, you know, the capital bucket, but, as you start to move into the maintenance side, you know, the, over, the purpose of the oversight committee is to ensure that the monies are spent in the manner that was intended by the legislation that, you know, our, our residents voted for. So, you know, if they happen to see a, a red flag, you know, I guess you'd have to be able to recognize when a red flag exists, you know, right. uh, could, for example, I'm not suggesting anything nefarious upon, you know, staff of the council at this point, but if you saw an item that didn't look like it might have been for road maintenance, um, you know, that might be something that, you know, member of the committee or the committee itself might call the question. Um, some, you know, some, a, a more tangible example would be, all right, there's the, the absolute uh within the boundaries where, yeah, it's for, for roads. And then something that might be outside of that, for example, is if the monies get used for something that might be ancillary to the roads, but you know, one might question, okay, is this truly a road maintenance project or is it to uh, assist in um, you know, helping to fund another project? Right. And, and what, can you think of an example? I can, but maybe you maybe you have one in mind. Uh, I don't have one in mind at this point. You know, yeah. th those would be the type of things that, you know, the COC should be looking for. And, you know, if they do see, see something, at least, um, you know, ask for clarification on that. Yeah, no, of course. Okay, do, do others have questions? Catherine? Uh, nice to see you, Larry. I see you on the bike path occasionally yeah. these days now. <laughs> um, I mean, you're eminently qualified to participate in this role. So I think we have one opening and uh, on a seat. And your knowledge of the city's finances and both of these measures is just um, uncomparable. So I just wanted to thank you for stepping forward. And I noticed when you put together your application, you are also volunteering on a lot of other um, public um, processes. And I think that that's really commendable that even though you stepped down from an elected role, you're still serving on boards and commissions across the county, which I think is a wonderful thing for all of us to want to emulate eventually. Um, so I, I know you know this issue, so I won't press it any further or ask any more detailed questions because I think we've heard a lot of them. Thank you for acknowledging that. Yeah, one of the things I said, I think in my final meeting was you know, you might not see me on your side of the dais, but the things on the other side of the dais I might still help be able to help with would be more discrete projects that have a beginning, middle, and end to them. Well, and I think your perspective, um, both having been an insider with the city of Larkspur, but also playing a larger role within the community is helpful to all of us. Scott, I think you wanted, you wanted to chip in here. Yeah, Larry, I just want to say hi. and, and uh, Obviously, you're qualified. I don't want to waste your time or anybody's time asking you questions because I don't think anybody doubts that you're, you're qualified. But I just wanted to thank you for stepping up. Appreciate it. Well, thank you. You know, um, you know, I, I'll have to say, you know, I am absolutely willing to help out, you know, the council in the city. But I also recognize that sometimes there are qualified candidates who you may want to get say a larger segment of the community engaged. 
So, you know, if you feel that uh, somebody else has the qualifications to do that and you would like to see some, you know, new faces, you know, I would not be uh, offended or uh, feel taken aback if I were not selected. Well, we, 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 we assume as much and, and, and obviously we'll give the, uh, there's another applicant for this one and obviously we want to hear from her and, and uh, we'll, we'll take what everyone has to say into, into, into account. Well, um, I apologize. I misspoke then. I, I didn't realize there was a second candidate at this moment. So. I think that's the, there is a second candidate for this. There's only one candidate for the library, I think. Oh, I had them reversed. Just my am, apologies. I, am I wrong about that, Allison? No, I think you're, I think you, you're right. You are correct, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, Dan Helmer, you had your hand up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick follow-up, Larry, to uh, the question I asked earlier. <clears throat> um, how important have you found it to be that there are, uh, I'll use the uh, word guardrails uh, for the oversight committee where the, you, you described the mission as pretty focused on um, making sure the funds are expended according to the plan that has, is in place. Have you found in, in your work with the oversight committee that that's ever been an issue that needs reminding to the, to the group or has everybody uh, come in and uh, quickly understand the focus of the, of the group? Well, I, I don't know. I haven't attended any, any of the meetings you know, since 2019. I think anytime you have a citizens oversight committee and, and I'm on one right now with the MWPA and you know at, at the onset, which means it's during the formation, you know, people come on a lot of times thinking that um, their their role is broader than what is stated in the enabling legislation. Or they may think that they might want to do more than you know, what's the mandate of the committee is. And quite frequently, um, you know, you'll get COC members that want to, um, let's just say, have more of a voice in the strategic planning, whereas that's not the role of the COC. Uh, they, they might even want more of a voice in selecting, in this case, which streets get repaved or how much money gets allocated you know, as a percentage of, you know, the measure B money, you know, monies that come in, you know, those quite statedly are, are not the role of the COC. You know, our, our role is to make right. sure that the monies are spent in the manner that it was intended and there is adequate transparency to the public when it's reviewed and the report is written. Hey, that seems proper. Scott, you had your hand up? Yeah, one, more, one, one quick question, actually. Um, how important do you think it is uh, that the person taking on this role has a financial background? You know, what, what, what percentage of, of the role uh, for this position do you think is kind of financial based? I guess it's up to how a person views the role. Um, you know, if, if you're reading detailed financials, you should be able to at least understand how to read um, a financial statement and you know, the line item details, and then be able to interpret what that means you know, in terms of which buckets they're being dropped into and, and whether you can adequately ascertain if, um, you know, again, the monies are being spent you know, properly. So uh, I, I, I think it's hard for somebody who has no f accounting background to be able to do that unless they have a really good sense of, um, you know, just general finances. You know, they may not be an accountant, for example, but, you know, maybe they were an MBA in college, in which case, you know, you still need to take two semesters of accounting. Um, do, they, do they need to be a forensic accountant? No, I don't think so. But they should be conversant. They should know how to ask the right types of questions when they're doing a due diligence. So as much of it is their critical thinking abilities, you know, if they don't say have a strong financial background. 
Thank you. Okay, um, I'm, I want to be mindful of the time we're pushing up against six, uh, six o'clock. Is anybody else want to uh, chime in here with Larry before we lose him? Other than to say thank you for standing up once again. Okay, thank you and good to see you all again. All right, yeah, thank good. Thanks so much, Larry. Thank, thanks, Larry. We'll see you. Okay, Allison, we'll count on you for marching us along. Our next interview will be with Amir. Uh, I don't see him in the audience yet, but if you are here under a different screen name, if you could raise your hand, um, then we'll be able to know if you are in the audience. And Amir is the one candidate for the library, right? That's correct. Well, if a mirror is not available here in a moment or so, can we see if Kathleen is um, wanting to go ahead? Yeah, I'll ask if Kathleen's in the audience as well. I don't see that name on our attendee list, but okay. if Kathleen is one of our attendees currently, please raise your hand. And again, if Amir is one of the attendees as well under a different name, there we go. I think we have our library applicant here. Oh, good, great. And I'll move him over. Hi, Amir. How are you? Good, good. Now we now we can hear you. Uh, th thanks, thanks for coming. I'm I'm Kevin Haroff. I guess I I'm the nominal orchestrator of this, uh, aside from our city clerk, Allison. Um, and I don't, I don't know if you've met all of us. Maybe we just go around the table. Like I said, I'm, I'm Kevin Haroff. I'm, I'm this year serving as this year's mayor. And maybe we'll go from Dan to Catherine to Scott to Gabe. Hi, I'm Mayor Dan Hilmer here, um, serving as vice mayor this year. Thanks a lot for uh, offering your uh, special skill sets. My pleasure. Pleasure to meet you. Hi, Amir. I'm Catherine Way. Uh, sec end of my second term, um, elected first in 2013. Welcome. Hi, hey, Amir. I'm Scott Candell. This is actually my first term. Uh, and uh, thank you for, uh, for stepping up to, to do this. We, we all appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Amir. Gabe Paulson, also first term. Uh, and yeah, want to echo all the gratitude. I actually applied for the position. Love the library. Happy to see you doing this. Thank you. Of course. Nice so now, now, now that you know all of us, maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit uh, about yourself and, and your interest in uh, serving in this role. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for, thanks for letting me join in. I was quite pleased. I wasn't sure how competitive this was going to be. Um, and uh, when, when my wife told me uh, about the opportunity, I was very excited to dive, dive right in. We, um, I, I grew up outside of the, uh, outside of Marin, far from Marin County. I was born in Iran. I grew up in Istanbul and Turkey. Uh, I've been in different spots in the U S and, um, been there now on and off since 2010. Um, and, uh, my, we, we, we've been in Larkspur now for close to four years. Um, and, uh, and we've uh, three kids, all for for the last. Our oldest is eight, and um, have been dedicated, very very dedicated uh, visitors to the the library. Um, and uh, it's kind of like one of the best memories I have of my you know eight year old is 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 taking her um, to story time, and and uh, it's 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 such a gift to the community, and I think both being able to continue the efforts and, and can with the exciting opportunity of the potential new library, I, I really want to be able to plug in and, and do more. Um, and uh, I'm happy to walk through my professional background and, you know, um, 
I, I have a, I, I was trained in, in finance for most of my career and moved uh, to tech in 2010, uh, worked uh, with Twitter for five years um, from zero revenue to IPO. Um, and then I, I uh, uh, since then I, I moved to Austin, Texas for a couple of years. Um, my wife and I were, were, were um, met in New York, uh, you know, did the bi-coastal living and we wanted to kind of see what life was like outside of the two, two coasts and did that for a couple of years. And after one summer in Texas, we uh, came back. Um, and uh, it was the weather, right? <laughs> it was, it was the weather, the allergy, and uh, and 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 discovering nature uh, at its worst, with in terms of bugs and and uh, things that you kind of like forget living in Marin. What you you have uh, uh, you take it for granted, honestly. Um, so uh, the the since then I I, I now work uh, at at Mixed Panel, which is a uh, a product analytics company, and um, I'm. Uh, the couple companies now around 300 employees, and we're we're uh, we're doing some exciting stuff in terms of helping um, people make more informed decisions on the products they build with 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 the uh, with the data they have. Um, so that's a little bit trip down professional uh, memory lane, and um, the motivation, honestly, for applying for this is I, I've I've decided I've started to get a lot more involved in the. And Neil Cummins and and just kind of more proactive uh, in in as my daughter you know kindergarten now now she's in second grade but just kind of seeing the opportunities to engage and wanted to deposit more um, I feel like this is another area that's kind of squarely dire directly uh, related to my passion which is kids and education and you know it's like it's like a perfect for me to just stay with school district and library feels very complimentary. Well, that, that's terrific. That's a, uh, an, an interesting background and, and obviously a, a great skill set to be able to contribute to this process and to our community overall. Um, so why don't I just uh, uh, ask if uh, other members of the council have any specific questions or, or things they'd like to, to address with you. And we'll start with our vice mayor if he has one. Hi, Amir. Thanks uh, again. Uh, my question has to do with how you view libraries in 2021. Uh, our, our current library, uh, as, as much loved as it is, uh, needs updating uh, with facilities, et cetera. Uh, libraries uh, probably have more to do with uh, information than just books uh, these days. So I'd like your uh, view of libraries in 2021 and how, how that can be integrated with um, the community, schools, et cetera. Yeah, um, I think my, one of the key things that I, I feel like has happened as maybe 20, you know, 20 odd years ago when really the search engines kind of came together and started collating and becoming kind of the, the knowledge repository for majority of the, the world. Um, and you have this really incredible um, uh, difficulty in connecting with, with actual curation of, of knowledge that is um, done thoughtfully for a targeted group that's trying to enrich and learn about a specific topic or, you know, in some ways uh, discover, you know, things that are coming from a recommended audience. Um, so one way I feel like library can be quite powerful is, is the, the ability for us to just curate and, and give um, the right set of in, the right set of books, the right set of knowledge uh, to, to the audience with a much more higher touch um, than you can get right now in this kind of on-demand, um, everything kind of like information overload um, that exists today. Um, and I think programmatically delivering that in a way that feels less intimidating, you know, than embarking on some very uh, grandiose sort of educate online educational content or things that have these massive drop-off rates where I think the physical 
dynamic of the library gives a, a very unique advantage um, to grab the best of what's available in, in, in terms of the innovation that's gone in on the digital side, um, but marry that with the physical component of, of bringing people and directly con connecting them you know, to subject matter experts, bringing kids and um, connecting them to these, like at least the, the summer activities, like they're so special, you know, the, the, anything that the library does when it brings the kids together, because from a physical interaction standpoint, it's one of the few opportunities to really get kids directly involved um, in, in, in something that uh, is, is candidly just like thoughtfully put together um, and creates this like not only long-term memory, but creates this association and love for long-form content, uh, which, you know, I personally feel like is, is something we're really starting to lose and is a deep, um, it, 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 I think it could be quite harmful to our society if everything, everyone kind of gets into, I just like consume a paragraph and that's all I need to know about this topic, you know, or I need to read a 140 character tweet which is you know my old my old company um and that's going to give me everything i need and so i think developing investing in the in, in the i'm obviously particularly biased and passionate about kids i, I realize the library serves a bigger um group and and certainly want to be mindful of that but i i do think we we have an opportunity whereas adults at least we have we we have that association with books and long form content. Um, I think our children and the new gen, you know, the, the, the K through eight and beyond, though, that generation is unlikely to have that same um, base. And I think to the extent we can really make the library far more attractive of a destination as a go-to um, for kids, we'll be able to really uh, instill this sense of desire to want to consume long-form content, exploring and understanding knowledge in a deeper level, at a deeper level. Um, and if we can influence that at a micro level, the inspiration for, you know, other counties. And, you know. yeah. uh, thank you. Great. That's a very powerful uh, statement that uh, reminds me of exactly why I love libraries before the internet. And I, yep. I think that that's really helpful and important to uh, bring into the to, to the now. Thanks. Great yeah. answer. Th thanks, Samira. It was a, was a great answer, and you covered a lot of ground. And again, kind of mindful of the time. We got about three or four minutes left for this slot, so I want to make sure everybody else on the council has an opportunity to quickly ask a, a question of Amir. And I see Scott's hand up. Uh, hey, hey, Amir. Uh, just I'll, I'll try to be quick. Uh, one of my passions is uh, we are uh, hopefully going to be building a new library um, with, you know, basically 5,000 square feet. Uh, and I'm curious with your views, you know, how you would envision if you could create that library, you know, as, as far as books versus computers versus open space for programming versus, you know, things like that. How would you, how would you see the ideal library? Yeah, I, I would I, I would love to move it in a in a way that it has this creative pod sense of bringing people together, bringing kids together in a way that uh, fosters a sense of you know consuming, but then interacting on that content. Um, I, I'm not so you know uh, opinionated around like you know creating a modern library that's like books are like the whole like I I I'm a huge advocate of the books you know so I want the books to be front and center. Um, but be complemented with the digital, but then more importantly, this this um, this kind of a pod model where people can come in and get excited about in interacting on that content. You know, my daughter and I, you know, read the entire Harry Potter series over the pandemic, and um, and we we just like she was dying to get in and and talk about it with other kids and exploring, you know, and, and unpacking, you know, the story. Um, and why not give these children who are consuming this like an opportunity to engage and, and adults who want to, you know, book clubs are, I, I promise you, like I've tried the book club over virtual. It's not the same, you know, getting together physically and, and, and doing it is a whole different experience. Well, anyway. Great. Thank, thanks, Amir. We got like a minute left. Catherine, Gabe, do you have anything that's burning that you want to 
pause in here real quick. Um, I'll I'll bring up something. Hi, Amir. I really enjoy speaking. Um, I can't wait till the day we could actually speak in person on these things because you live right down the street. So um, thank you for putting your name forward for this. And I really see your passion about um, the opportunities for children and the, mer the um, meshing of the school curriculum and uh, school libraries with what the community library can serve, which is a vision I have too. Um, I also... Uh, we're, I'm working this year on getting Larkspur 8 to be classified as an age-friendly community, which is a national classification, uh, so that we can look at more intergenerational things. Uh, library is a great place to do intergenerational um, programming and things. Have you had a chance to do any of the uh, online programming that has been done during the Zoom year that we've all incurred, encountered? I know um, our librarian has been putting together a lot of online programming options. I no, I have not, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, not 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 yet, but I will happy to begin and check it out. Yeah, that I think that's a great way to learn a lot about what um, interests the community, um, because what they've asked for as far as uh, online um, right re uh, resources and speaker series and docents and things is a great starting point. But thank you very much for coming forward. Hey, thanks. And Gabe, if you have something real, real quick, because we're now yeah, a little bit I, over time. Uh, 10 seconds. Amir, I, I was really enthusiastic and, and very glad you're applying. Uh, it sounds like you're doing it for all the right reasons. So thank you. My pleasure. It's very, very nice meeting you all. I'm sorry. Yes. No, th thank you. Yes. Thank you, Amiria. And thank you for standing up. And we'll, uh, we'll, be, we'll be in touch soon, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Okay, thanks very much. I'm sorry to rush things along, but I want to make sure we don't we don't cut our last person off uh, prematurely. Thanks, Amir. Okay, Allison, do we okay, have and I am Kathleen? Oh yes. I am promoting Kathleen to a panelist and she'll soon be joining us. Okay, I see your face. Hi. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. I think we've all maybe met, maybe not, maybe not the newest ones, but I think the rest of us maybe. But again, Kathleen, this is Kevin Haroff. I'm, as you may know, I'm currently serving as the city's mayor. And since you may not have met everybody on the council, um, why don't we just do a quick round robin and uh, have everyone introduce themselves, starting with uh, with our vice mayor Dan Hilmer. Hi, Kathleen. I'm trying to, my, I'm having net, body network issues. Uh, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for applying for the spot. Um, I really appreciate uh, reading your resume. You have an incredible uh, background. And I look forward to uh, asking you a question after we introduce ourselves. Okay. Catherine, how about you? Hi, Kathleen. Catherine Way. Nice to meet you. Looks like you're talking to us from the back of a car. Yeah, you know, I it's my daughter's eighth grade graduation dinner, and so I'm in a parking lot. Oh, uh, it started at six, but I'm happy to be here, and uh, I appreciate you uh, moving things along so I can get heard. I don't, I don't think the cocktail hour will start. Well, actually, it's just fruit juice and all that. It's so seven. Congratulations. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get you we'll get you out in time we and we appreciate you very much taking the time to, to meet with us um uh, gabe or scott you want to say hello kathleen uh we've met nice nice to see you hi scott how are you good we go way back we go back to preschool it's with yeah. his kids Pardon my oh, kid no. kids. <laughs> yeah great to meet you kathleen um yeah i'm, I'm really happy and and uh surprised with your versatility there trying to dodge events so so thanks for joining us and looking forward to asking a question great nice to meet you too so so kathleen we've seen your application and if you'd like to you know uh highlight anything that you've you've put there or say just a little bit about yourself and your interest in in um playing this role sure so i being a member of, of uh the Magnolia Avenue corridor for uh, 13 years now. I obviously am very vested in our streets and are and curious about how they get paved and when they get paid in the schedule. So that when I saw the opening uh, being announced in IJ and then read about um, the in the meeting minutes today about the proposal and the plan, um, I was excited because I saw even though Magnolia is going to be at the end of the phases, uh, it will be repaved. And I just wanted to get involved and I um of the two library I, I'm an average reader like Amir and 
um, go to the library and miss our little library. And um, but of the two, I wanted to. I felt like the, the park. I thought the parking, the paving, was more spoke to me more because I really want it to work out well and make sure every every neighborhood we can get done and our fiscal dollars are spent well. So that's why I applied. I, I obviously have been involved in the community with Tidal Waves and with Stapleton. And being an attorney, I feel like I can weigh both sides of every issue and and um, advocate on both sides and stay, you know, obviously with the clients, I'm I'm more of an advocate, but I'm also understand that the um, mediation and listening to both sides is important. And that's where I feel like I do well on boards is because I do take consideration at what everybody has to say before making my own decision. So I thought I'd be good for the public in that sense. I know fiduciary duty and and the, the important job this uh, this committee has for our streets and our tax dollars. Good. I mean, I think those are those are good observations. This is an important oversight committee, and it's going to be, uh, I think, even more important as we move out of the construction phase into to longer term maintenance issues. So why don't I go around and see if anyone else on the council wants to ask a question or, or prod you a little bit on an issue of concern to them? Sure. And I see Scott Kendall. Uh, Kathleen, uh, thank you. First of all, thanks for stepping up and applying for this. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, my question is, uh, the position uh, for the Measure B uh, may have a lot of financial slash accounting components to it. Um, I, I don't think that came across in, in your CV. Could you just tell us a little bit about your you know, financial background qualifications so that when you're reviewing things, you know, we know that you, you know, feel comfortable with that area? Sure. Um, I started off early and I've been at Cypress for 25 years. So I, I, I have had a fair share of my construction defect cases. And that is involved with evaluating bids and change orders and um, hidden costs and reading the fine line, you know, fine tuning uh, contracts. And so I know my way around Excel spreadsheets. I know how to, uh, with all the boards I've been on, we've had profit and loss statements. I, I'm currently the treasurer of the um, Stapleton School for the Performing Arts on the board. So I have that experience. I wouldn't say math was my best subject, uh, but I'm very comfortable looking at profit loss, looking at change orders, looking at bids and drilling down into the nitty gritty on what this actually means in layman's terms. So. Um, that, but it's not something, and I, I currently have a case with um, where I have a lot of spreadsheets because it involves with healthcare billing. And um, so I, all I can say is I, I see too many Excel spreadsheets. I was looking at a couple of them today and um, I know it's not all Excel spreadsheets, but it's, um, it's really knowing what terms mean what in, within a, a spreadsheet and how it plays into the bottom line of a project. Okay, Never have enough Excel spreadsheets. They're, they're okay, wonderful. Thanks, Kathleen. Sure. Okay, anybody else from the council want to ask Stephanie or Kathleen a question? I'm sorry. Uh, Vice Mayor Helmer. Hi, Kathleen. Thanks again. Could you tell us a little bit sure. your understanding of the role of this committee and um, its mission? Sure. I see the role of this committee is looking and making sure that you, you all have done a lot of the hired the consultant to help with the, the bidding process and really to make sure when we look at the bids that it's, uh, you know, you have in the parentheses the lowest bid so far, you know, the potentially lowest bid and really making sure that we're understanding all the bids and where there could be hidden costs and potential for overrunning on a budget or a bid um, and really making, holding the contractors to their bids during the process and having just a, a you you know you guys have so much on your plate you need a committee to kind of farm it out to get into the into the weeds on on that and that's where i see us coming in and making sure it's we're we're not dropping any balls and we're we're making sure we're streets are getting that were potentially put off or getting back on and how does that work in for the with um the new the next phase and it's, it's very complicated from what I can tell so far. So I can understand why you would need an oversight committee to, to make sure that everything goes according to plan and budget. Thank you. Catherine. Hi, Kathleen. Um, one of the um, 
one of the things that came up early on in this process was that there was a lot of um, lobbying by neighborhoods and specific residents on streets to make their street bumped up in the protocol. But we followed a very strict um, engineering standard and assessment tool that I, I feel that we're confident is doing um, that the roads for the best financial um, reasons and for the safety reasons too. Um, but we may face people who at once again lobby for having their street um, paved earlier than others. How I, I'm not sure that that actually goes to the oversight committee, but if it did, what would your sort of thoughts on that be? It's a great question because it's kind of like follow the numbers, follow the science. And what we're going through right now is with how we're having to deal with COVID. It's just, and who gets, what what gets open first. And we had to deal with that with Stapleton feeling like, well, why, you know, why are gyms opening up and why can't, why can't we open up? But really what I would appeal to the citizens is you have to do the greatest good with the amount that you, of money you have. So you're following the, the engineering and that is your sort of ultimate defense to someone who says, well, I want my neighborhood next. Well, you know, if we do your neighborhood next, then we might have this trickle down effect and, and other more important corridors or avenues wouldn't get, um, wouldn't get paved in, in the proper way. So I think my answer would be if someone came to me and said, you know, was lobbying for a neighborhood, I would really be, have to be so fact-based on why we were, providing, you know, why we were planning the way we were. I do ERISA law now. Um, it's entire, um, entirely based on like the administrative record. And you have to show you weighed all, you know, weighed this pension option versus that pension option and why you made this decision. And I would hope that the committee would help you all to explain to a pu the public why we did what we did and how fair it was for the good of the, you know, everybody, all the citizens of Larkspur. So Thank you. Thank well. you very much. Okay, hey, Gabe, I think it's your turn. Sure. Yeah, Kathleen, um, from, you know, your, you know, being a citizen so active, is there anything, you know, in the last few years with Measure B or the roads that you've, um, you know, that you've observed that you might want to change or, you know, that you want to critique or, you know, any issues, you know, any priorities? I think that the one thing I would do with the, the redoing of our sidewalks and the accessibility for the handicaps, because I'm familiar with obviously the ADA, um, I would be get better messaging to the cities, to the citizens of Larkspur. So there's all this speculation on why it was done. Someone came up to me and said it was for the blind and they need the bumps. And, you know, I, I had enough to know, no, you know, we, we weren't in compliance and you have these lawyers that are trolling cities and they will sue the city and there goes, you know, you're, you're one, you know, lawsuit away from bankruptcy. So I just would have better messaging on the plan for Larkspur. I know you, you, you may think you'd do everything you could do to make it public and all that, but from the average citizen who doesn't maybe read the IJ and, and doesn't of course go on your website, they don't know the plan. And that's the only criticism I would have is with, with our projects that we're doing on our roads that affect every citizen Larkspur, I would just have better messaging so that, and that would be, you know, flyers, I mean, or, or digital flyers, or in the library, you know, you could have a, a bulletin board where, you know, here's our plan, and did you know, and just so I, I would get creative with that, and that's what I would do. I don't, I, you know, the money is what the money is, and you're doing their best job in terms of trying to get the most for the dollar, so I don't think there's any criticism there, and I'm glad it's happening, and we obviously passed the measure because we want it to happen, so people should know that it's in the works, but I don't think they know it enough. Thank you for that answer. Okay, anyone else uh, on the council want to bring anything up? Um, well, I'll just close. Well, for one thing, what uh, just sub substantively, you know, one of the things we're going to be doing uh, with oversight and with the program overall is kind of moving transitionally towards uh, the maintenance phase of what we've already done as opposed to the actual the construction phase because we're kind of winding that down and, and that may present some different challenges than just kind of overseeing the you know the, the the contracts to implement the paving projects it's 
maintenance is maintenance and things come up that you don't necessarily anticipate. So that, that's gonna be a challenge for the oversight committee as well. But I wanna mostly just thank you for, for your interest and for showing up and taking time away from <laughs> your family and, and uh, your, your juice cocktails or whatever it is that they're, yeah. they're serving at the yeah, party. They're, they're not serving good wine over there, so it's Yeah, fine. right. Well, so maybe we've spared you that for at least 10 minutes. So uh, again, thank you so much for, for putting your name in and uh, uh, your application. Just, we just really, really appreciate it very much. We're very grateful yeah. to have such wonderful members of our community standing up for these roles. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Can I ask when the, the next phase would be like the, the 16th? I think you all are making your decision or? I, I think that, yeah, it'll be, I think, uh, Alice, correct me if I'm wrong, but it'll, it'll be the next city council meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Good. Thanks. Thanks very much, Kathleen. Bye. Okay. And we are right on time. So I'll kick it back to, uh, to Allison at this point. Okay, and that was our last interview for item 2.1 on the special meeting. And we can move on to adjourning to the regular meeting now or, or at 6.30. Yep, so let's adjourn the, uh, the special meeting for consideration of these oversight committee applications.